So in this video, I'm going to explain what the trip operon is, and I'm going to explain how it works. So in a previous video, I explained what the lac operon is, and that had to do with the lactose. The trip operon has to do with the amino acid tryptophan. So the trip operon is in E. coli or, and some other bacteria, but the important thing to note is that tryptophan is needed for organisms to survive. And the cool thing is that organisms can synthesize tryptophan if it's not in the environment. And so this, the trip operon will encode for genes that allow for the synthesis of tryptophan. Now, if you think about it, when would you need to make tryptophan? It's probably when the tryptophan levels are low in the environment. So when you don't have a lot of tryptophan in the environment, the cell is going to go turn on the genes to create tryptophan to make sure that the cell gets enough tryptophan. And once again, like the lac operon, the trip operon is adjustable. So that means that it's not either on or off. So when it's on, you can adjust how much tryptophan you make. And this makes sense because you don't want to make an excessive amount of tryptophan if you don't need it. So if you have a lot of tryptophan in the environment, you probably don't need to make more tryptophan because that would just be a waste of energy. One more thing about the trip operon is that it is considered a repressible operon. So that means in general, the transcription is on until the repressor binds to turn it off. So normally it's like this where you don't have the repressor bound and this will allow the RNA polymerase to transcribe the genes that are needed to create tryptophan. And now you might be looking over here and you see that when the tryptophan binds to the repressor, the repressor is then going to bind to the operator sequence. And when this happens, it's going to prevent the RNA polymerase from making mRNA. And so some terms to briefly go over, although they're not too, too important. So the term aporepressor refers to a protein that has no DNA binding activity on its own, and it requires the presence of a co-repressor, in this case tryptophan, to turn transcription off. So this repressor here is technically considered an aporepressor, which means that it is unable to repress the transcription on its own. Now, in this situation, the tryptophan is the co-repressor. So it's a pretty cool negative feedback loop where if we imagine we're in this situation and we keep transcribing these genes and we keep making more tryptophan, as a result, we're eventually going to have a lot of tryptophan so that it'll bind to the repressor here to stop the transcription. And so that pretty much sums it up for this. As you can see, if you watch the lac operon video, this operon, the trip operon, is a lot more simple. Just to briefly summarize the important takeaways from this video that I hope you got, the trip operon encodes for the genes that will allow for the synthesis of tryptophan. The trip operon is also considered a repressible operon. And so I just realized that I made a typo here, but this is supposed to say repressible. And then you have tryptophan that acts as the co-repressor. So you need tryptophan to repress the transcription. And that pretty much sums it up for this video. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments or questions, please type them down below. I hope you liked the video and found it useful. If you did, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this.